Welcome to another edition of Outdoor Adventures Radio. Host Gary Howie, I'm Simon Fuller. Gary, a new adventure awaits in this brand new week. What are we going to be talking about? We're going to talk about the weather and how it affects fish. If you're an angler and you're going to go, say, Big Stone or Webster, that area, you've got your information right there on your phone. You can tell if it's going to be a good day or not. And the thing is, you know, on the earth there's only two pressurized systems, and that's air and water. And those conditions are a big part as far as how the walleyes will react, whether they'll be feeding, whether they'll be located. But they've got so many ways, uh, so many senses that they can, we're talking walleye, can detect changes before we even get them. One's their bladder, that's the big thing, and of course their lateral line. So, and as a diver, I drove down to a break in the, where it went from shallow to deep, and we were swimming around, and, all of a sudden, and the fish were right among, just didn't bother them. All of a sudden, they just deed him out. They took off and went deep, and I'm going, hmm. And then about five minutes later, the lightning and everything broke loose, and uh, I asked my dive instructor, I said, what, would she, what should we do in a chalkboard? He said, run out of air and run like hell. I go, wait a second. <laughs> There's a little bit of reserve in the tank. That's what he was trying to say. Right. But, yeah, but, you know, they knew it long before we did. That's all there is to it, you know. Barometric pressure, you know, whether it's rising or lowering, I mean, it can be good fishing, but high pressure is uh, probably the most comfortable for the, the fish in their bladders. And that can absolutely make a huge difference on the bite and something we'll continue to talk about throughout the week and hopefully give you some information, tips, and tactics to help you be more successful no matter what Mother Nature throws at you. Gary, thank you for the great information today. Look forward to more throughout the week. Thank you for joining us and to our fine sponsors who make Outdoor Adventures Radio possible. Until next time, may your adventures be great. Welcome to another edition of Outdoor Adventures Radio with host Gary Howie. I'm Simon Fuller. This week we're talking first aid in the outdoors. Today, Gary, sun exposure. Sun is good. It makes our outdoor experience a, a lot nicer but too much isn't uh, isn't good for anybody and, and uh, I'm one of those guys like you mentioned that when I guided I worried about the scent and the fish you know I didn't want to spook them yada 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 well that was stupid because down the road I ended up with skin cancer uh, and it was because I didn't take care of myself so you know I should have caught a few less fish and not have to worry about that skin cancer, but I ended up with squamous cells and they took a better part of my lower lip because of it. But uh, you just have to have to protect yourself no matter what you're, what you're doing out there. And there's over a million of these non-melanoma skin cancer, and a lot of it could be prevented by just using sunscreen, wearing long sleeve shirts, cap, you know, anything to keep the sun from burning down on you. But when it comes to sunscreens, you want want good sunscreens. You want UA, UB, and uh, you also want that's at least 25. I use 50 now when it comes to the SPF, just to keep from ending up with a burn. And of course, my lips, I gotta, I've got to use something for that. I use Dermatolin. They've got a, a lip balm that protects my lips, keeps them soft, keeps them scratching. So just something that you might not think about, but maybe you better. And don't just put it on once and call it good for the day. Yep, exactly. You reapply and reapply sweat. It wears off. Once you're burned, Gary, it's too late. That's it. A lot of sun uh, screen companies say reapply it every 12 to 15 minutes just to be sure. And a lot of it's supposed to be waterless. But still, you know, when you come out of the water, dry yourself off. You wipe it off. So reapplication is pretty important. Thanks for joining us for this edition of Outdoor Adventures. Welcome to another edition of Outdoor Adventures Radio with host Gary Howie. I'm Simon Fuller. This week has us talking about weather, fronts, and fishing. Gary? The old wife's tale is wind from the east, fish bite the least, wind from the west, fish bite the best. And that's because one way or another you're bringing the front through, one way or the other changing the water pressure. You hate too much wind like we've had here lately. But a walleye chop, just so you've got some ripple on the water, that allows those fish to move up a little. It kind of takes some shift. of that sunlight out of that, the, the direct, it's not a direct yep. beam now. And that's yep. what it's doing. It's taking that out of the equation for you. Yep, and you bet, you know, uh, they'll take opportunities whenever they can. The walleyes, they have to follow them food around. So in, uh, if the bait fish are in the mudline, uh, the walleyes are gonna be right with them. It's not like they got a McDonald's or a 
or a Wendy's, they just have to follow their food. But the thing is, changes in pressure are going to affect the fish. That's all there is to it. And I still go by statement I just made about the east and west because it does make a difference. One will move a front end, another one will move a front out. So Yeah, you've been uh, a guide for many, many years. You've been a outdoorsman for many, many years. There's no question you've been in both situations. I would say you could probably, uh, with experience, claim that whether there's some truth to that or not, Gary. Well, that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> <laughs> also, and, 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 you know, the one, if you want to say a bit of good news, if you're nearby a river, you know, if there's something going on that it seems like river fish are less affected by some of these uh, changes, as many, so... You know, maybe it's an opportunity to go to, to go get your line wet in one of those systems. The difference between a lake and, and a river is it's huge. Thank you, Gary, for the adventure today. Thank you for joining us and to our fine sponsors who make Outdoor Adventures Radio possible. Have a great day. Welcome to another edition of Outdoor Adventures Radio with host Gary Howie. I'm Simon Fuller. This week has us talking about weather, fronts, and fishing. Gary? Sometimes... You don't have time to go when the day is nice or the day is nice or the day is old. Take the opportunity, and even if you, you don't catch that trophy fish you're looking for, you're going to be out and about, and that's a lot lot easier on a man than working. That's, that's well, yeah, that's exactly right. Maybe not always mentally, but physically yeah, for sure. Yeah, there you go. Physically for sure. Even the moon can play a factor in it, or I guess there's there, that's been said. Yep, you bet. They say three days prior to full moon or after full moon. That's supposed to be when you should be on the water. Best fishing will be prior three days before and after a yep. full moon. I mean, I guess here's what you can tell your wife. I'm not sure, so I'm going to fish six days, three days prior up through three days after, and I'll tell you which day was the best, honey. <laughs> yeah. That's your vacation. <laughs> Wait for the full moon. <laughs> and in addition to all these factors with Mother Nature, we've got some incredible electronics that help them. Um, you know, locating the fish is key, and if they're moving around based on these conditions, you know, we've got technology to help us locate them. Yeah, and the, the new locators with the side view, I mean, some of them are... You know, you can tell it's a tree or a little blip. You can tell it's a fish, but still, you got to get him to bite. But it just makes fishing so much easier because it doesn't exactly draw you a photo, but it's pretty close. You know what's on either side of you and what's below you. So that's made a big difference, the electronics. Yeah. If you're there and they're not biting, but you can tell the fish are there, you at least have taken that factor out of the equation. All right, I might need to change my presentation, yeah. try something new, and, and uh, you, you stand a better chance, Gary, that's for sure. Yeah, you do, that's for sure. Thank you, Gary, for the great information. Thank you as well for joining us today. We hope to catch you again tomorrow, and thanks to our fine sponsors who make Outdoor Adventures Radio possible. Have a great day. Welcome to Outdoor Adventures Radio. As we wind down the week, let's recap this week's adventure on weather fronts and fishing. Gary? There's only two pressurized systems in the earth and that's air and water. That's a large part of how the fisher walleyes are going to react but weather can affect fishing in oh, a lot of ways. How the fish are going to react, where they're going to be located, etc. Uh, changes could be just water temperature, barometric pressure affecting how the fish are going to, where they're going to be and how they're going to be acting. They sense it through their bladder. That's uh, the fronts coming through. During high pressure conditions, the fish are going to go on a bite, and they're going to eat pretty heavily until that front moves through. And it's just one of those deals. You go when you can, and with the phone we have now and the equipment we have now, we know ahead of time that the weather's going to do this or the weather's going to do that. So it's helped us a lot, but you still got to got to catch them. All right, wind from the east, fish bite the least. From the West, they bite the best, Gary. That's, that's, that's it. That's my big takeaway. That's mine. I like that. I can remember that easily. <laughs> yeah. That's my story. I'm sticking to it, Simon. Gary, another fantastic outdoor adventure. So many more just like this radio program can be found on TV and online. Yeah, you bet. Outdoorsman Adventures airs in eight upper Midwestern states, as well as uh, on South Dakota, North Dakota, Minnesota. We're on the Medco Sports Network, Nebraska, the Nebraska News Channel. You can find Outdoorsman Adventures on Facebook, or you can uh, go to my website, uh, Gary Howie's Outdoors. We will have uh, information on the outdoors, column recipe, and, and much more. That's Gary Howie's Outdoors. Or you can catch uh, Outdoorsman Adventures on the YouTube and on the Outdoor Channel, myoutdoortv.com, son. All right, Gary, appreciate yet another adventure. 
adventure. Look forward to doing it again next week. Well, Simon, it's only my pleasure. Thank you as well for joining us and to our fine sponsors of Outdoor Adventures Radio. Have a great day. Welcome to Outdoor Adventures Radio. As we wind down the week, let's recap this week's adventure on weather fronts and fishing. Gary? There's only two pressurized systems in the earth, and that's air and water. That's a large part of how the fisher walleyes are going to react, but weather can affect fishing in oh, a lot of ways. How the fish are going to react, where they're going to be located, etc. Uh, changes could be just water temperature, barometric pressure affecting how the fish are going to, where they're going to be and how they're going to be acting. They sense it through their bladder. That's uh, the French coming through. During high pressure conditions, the fish are going to go on a bite and they're going to eat pretty heavily until that front moves through and it's just one of those deals. You go when you can and with the phone we have now and the equipment we have now, we know ahead of time that the weather's going to do this or the weather's going to do that. So it's helped us a lot, but you still got to gotta catch them. All right, wind from the east. Fish bite the least from the west. They bite the best, Gary. That's that's, that's it. That's my big takeaway. That's mine. I like that. I can remember that easily. <laughs> yeah. That's my story. I'm sick and do it, Simon. Gary, another fantastic outdoor adventure. So many more just like this radio program can be found on TV and online. Yeah, you bet. Outdoorsman Adventures airs in eight upper Midwestern states, as well as uh, on South Dakota, North Dakota, Minnesota. We're on the Midco Sports Network, Nebraska, the Nebraska News Channel. You can find Outdoorsman Adventures on Facebook, or you can uh, go to my website, uh, Gary Howie's Outdoors, where we'll have uh, information on the outdoors, column recipe, and, and much more. That's Gary Howie's Outdoors. Or you can catch uh, Outdoorsman Adventures on the YouTube and on the Outdoor Channel, MyOutdoorTV.com, Simon. All right, Gary, appreciate yet another adventure. Look forward to doing it again next week. Well, Simon, it's only my pleasure. Thank you as well for joining us and to our fine sponsors of Outdoor Adventures Radio. Have a great day.